Do you have a pile of handwritten data that needs to be converted to digital format? Have you tried typing the data in using a computer keyboard? Do you laboriously hunt and peck the numeric keypad? It works for small amounts of data, but when the volumes get big, you want other options. Why can't you just read and talk the data and have your intelligent device turn your voice into beautiful columns and rows of data? You know there's some really good no-cost options that capture the spoken word. You may even be using them. There's Alexa, Siri, Windows Speech Recognition, Google Docs Typing, and a number of others. These products are designed to recognize natural language and they work well with standard word-based dictation, full stop. They are designed to accept narrative text such as emails and documents and are in use by many who now talk to their mobile phones, comma, computers and intelligent home devices, full stop. But these products are hopeless when used to dictate rows and columns of data. They are generally cumbersome, slow and error prone in creating spreadsheets of numbers. We are a volunteer project group focused on salvaging Australia's historical climate records of the 19th century. These are large volume collections of paper records. To date, our volunteers have managed to digitize less than one quarter percent of the collection data, but our volunteers are not trained as proficient data entry operators. They have a painfully slow and frustrating experience hunting and pecking the numeric keypad to carefully type the data into an Excel spreadsheet. Looking for a more efficient, low or no cost alternative, in 2017, we investigated if voice input to Excel was viable. We produced a YouTube video showing Windows speech recognition interacting with Excel. The results were slow and the quality was less than satisfactory, so we abandoned the voice input option. But in late 2019, we again thought we'd relook at the options and see if anything had changed. In a methodical study, we examined and eliminated using Apple, an Android voice dictation on mobile phones. There just wasn't enough screen real estate to do it effectively. And we also eliminated Google Docs voice typing on tables and desktop, on, sorry, on tablets and desktops. Its error rate was not good enough and the users had to go through a fiddly sign-up procedure to access common Google Docs input forms. As a volunteer project, we only trial freeware options and did not investigate options that cost money such as Dragon, Philips, Brainer and others. However, we struck success on our last option, Microsoft's new Dictate option, which is included as part of Office 365 on desktop computers. Microsoft has made Dictate available in Word, PowerPoint, and a number of other Office apps, but again, they have left out Excel. So we once again found ourselves up against a problem of successfully dictating rows and columns of data straight into a spreadsheet. This forced us to think outside the square, which led to an experiment in dictating data first into a Microsoft Word, and then with some minor manipulation, importing the results as an Excel text or CSV file, and it worked. The video that follows was made by our project lead, Nathan Zakerjack, a third year Flinders University mathematics student. It's a snapshot of the process we have settled on to voice input handwritten meteorological data and to convert it to a, a spreadsheet format. This is how to use Microsoft Word to digitize data. This is what it looks like. 12 a.m. comma 29.582 comma 59 comma 1.5 comma 10 New line 3 a.m. comma 29.588 comma 60 comma 1.5 comma 40 New line 6 a.m. comma 29.62 comma 61 comma 1.5 comma 70 So why have I formatted the data like this? 
Basically, dictation software is awful with tables, but very good with lines of text. So I formatted this table as lines of text. Each comma denotes a column, and each line denotes a row. Excel can read this format and transform it into a spreadsheet. That's the plan, but first, let's remove any errors you may end up with. Although you come across some errors, there's a very simple trick. I'll be showing you how to remove them in a bit. So this is what about 10 minutes of using your voice to input data looks like. Everything you see here was made without touching the keyboard. Now, the vast majority of errors are with words. Numerical errors are very rare. But what do you do with errors like comma instead of comma or two instead of two? Well, the trick is the errors are repeatedly made in the exact same way. So words refined and replace can fix nearly all of them. If you want to get efficient, you could store a list of errors and what to replace them with. Or even further, you could write a macro to run find and replace to fix a very large set of data. Uh, but our testing shows that after find and replace is used, the result is a document with over 95% accuracy, which is what you see here. The vast majority of the time, the last errors are plainly obvious and can easily be cleaned up manually. So after manually fixing these errors comes transforming this into a table. To do that, copy and paste the whole document into a text file and save it. Then open Excel. Click on data, get data from file, from text slash CSV. Then select the text file that you saved. After this, you have to wait for it to load. But you have to make sure that this here is set to comma. After that, click load, and in a bit we'll have a table. And there you go. Now, uh, one thing to note is that you could have let, left the last of the errors to fix here. And that would let you take advantage of Excel's conditional formatting. Uh, what that does is that it basically highlights numbers that are outside a certain range or not numbers at all. Additionally, you could also have multiple people digitizing the same data and compare their work to find errors. Those are different ways that you can make manually fixing the last of those errors easier. And that's about it. So some things to keep in mind is that microphone quality does have uh, an effect on accuracy. As well, word features different accents and languages. So you can set your accent to have uh, the best accuracy. You also need uh, an internet connection as well as a Microsoft account for this to work. Now a Microsoft account is just Outlook email, so you can create that for free. If you're not signed in to a Microsoft account, then the dictation button won't actually be there. As you can see, it disappeared when once I signed out. As soon as you sign in, the dictation button will appear there. All you need to do is click on the sign in button here. Finally, if you made a one-off payment to buy Microsoft Office and not a reoccurring subscription payment, you won't have this feature at all. You need to own the subscription version of Office called Office 365. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.